Hi there, and welcome to the Seaside Lane channel, and welcome to the third video of the declutter series. A fridge is never quite clean unless you happen to just clean yours, but most likely you can join along with me and we can clean ours together. This banana was just asking to become a cheesy smile to introduce myself. I'm Morgan Lane, a wife, a mama, a happy homemaker, and a lover of Jesus. And I wanted to declutter and clean out the fridge to make room for these new items that I had just picked up at the store. So in this video, you'll find me clearing out all of the items in my fridge. Then I'll wipe down the shelves and the drawers and I'll place all the food back in. After the cleaning's done, I'll make some breakfast and some chai tea, and then I'll dive into painting in my Bible and I'll share a few verses and thoughts on joy. I really do enjoy baking and cooking simple meals for my family daily, but without a doubt, when the fridge is clean, it makes it so much easier and I'm so much more motivated to make those meals throughout the day. And my prayer is that you would find encouragement here and you would join me to clean out your fridge as well so we can serve our families and make our hearts and homes a haven. I started by taking absolutely everything out of the fridge. Sometimes I sort of cheat when it's grocery day and I pick up new things and I try to just like reshift and wipe it out. But taking it all out and setting it on the counter so it can be cleaned is the best way to make sure that everything is sorted through and taken out and only the things you need get put back in. In this declutter series, I've been chatting through the different fruits of the spirit. So as I clean, of course, there's one every week. And this one that popped up happened to be in a week of my life that has been not hard, but a tad things have popped up that are a tad frustrating or disheartening. And I thought, wow, God, what better time to dive deep into thinking about the Lord's joy on a week that you feel a tad bit off. As I clear out my very least favorite section, all the sauces that kids throw back in the drawer, on the door, I will talk about joy and how I was thinking of what a biblical joy is. And it's not just being happy or feeling good, but how joy is a deep and enduring state of our soul that no circumstance or event or human can steal away from us. It's delighting in God and choosing to rejoice in all things. Because our circumstances don't rule us, our mood swings are non-existent. And now, females, that does not mean that we are always in a good mood, but we can remain in an unexplainable place of contentment. Our heart's desire is to be a joyful person. I hope and pray that I don't allow misery or sorrow or sadness or despair to rule my thoughts or guide my actions. I think it's okay to feel those things and to work through those things, but to ultimately find rest in Him and return to the joy of the Lord with a heart of gladness and thanksgiving. After a time of mourning, I was happily cleaning my shelves and pondering joy and my oh-so-sick child home from school decided to help me build a hummus tower and put a pepper on top because that was the thing to do when mom was cleaning out the fridge. Also, this one loves cleaning out the fridge, and I do not love cleaning out the fridge. It is one of her God-given gifts. Like, I will pay her a few bucks, and I'm like, Mom is not <laughs> excited to do this. But if you would like to make some money today, you can do the fridge. And she usually does it for me. So this video is actually like a rare occurrence of, Oh, Mom's actually cleaning the fridge today, instead of the daughter that just jumped in front of the camera. Also, about a week ago, that one discovered that mom was on the YouTube, and it was pretty funny because she had my husband's phone, and she had propped it up and was, like, cleaning her whole bedroom and her whole bathroom, and she's just like, Mom, this is so inspiring. But I laughed, but it's kind of my heart, too, as well, is it's kind of silly, like, oh, you're watching some woman clean out her fridge or do her chores, but it's also my prayers in heart's posture that this would be for generations to come, for the generations that are techie and behind me, and even my own three daughters that they're at college or something and they need some motivation to clean in God's word and maybe they want to hear their mama's voice, who knows, but that there'll always be a place that they can click and see. Yay, done cleaning. Oh, it's beautiful. And now I'm awkwardly going to show you my clean fridge and celebrate and dance because my least favorite chore of the day is now done. 
Hi mom, here's me real life documenting that I still haven't killed my sourdough starter even though it almost looks like it is when I go to clean out my fridge every two weeks or a month and I check on it and I feed it and then somehow it always comes back to life. Thank goodness I can't kill it. So we usually make sourdough when the fridge gets deep cleaned and I find the starter in the back of it and I bring it back to life and it always comes back to life. And this bread turned out amazing. For some reason, it was like our best loaf. It was so crispy on the outside and soft on the inside and the kids devoured it before dad could even have any after work. A little contradicting to have a perfectly clean kitchen and refrigerator to go make a mess of the next meal, but it is easier once everything's clean to make something. So I am going to make eggy burritos as my kid calls them for breakfast and we can ponder everyday tasks. Do we find joy in them? It can be easy to get caught up in our to-do list. As a mom of three, I often forget to appreciate the small moments of life. I am thankful though as a homemaker for the Lord, I find joy in knowing that serving my family is also serving God. And today as I clean my fridge and make fresh bread and eggy burritos for little bellies, I'm reminded of the blessings that fill my life as I ponder his joy and all the things we have, such as food and health and life and breath. I pray you find joy in the everyday tasks of your life as well. To take a moment and appreciate the blessings that surround you and the love that fills your heart. And remember that joy is not about having the perfect life, but about finding the joy and the beauty in all the little imperfections. Twinnings Chai Tea, not yet a sponsor, but maybe someday, who knows? I used to love a different brand of chai, but they reformulated the blend and it was like way too spicy when they released the new one, so I went back to good old Twinnings. But I like to do oat milk and almond milk and vanilla, and then at the coffee shop I really like how they sprinkle the top of a chai tea latte with cinnamon sugar to make it look fancy, so, you know, I tried to do that here for you for the the fancy tea people. Now that we have cleaned and cooked and tea, I hope you join me in my fancy tea and some Bible time. The first verse I wanted to share was by the word joy with a ladybug and me on my bike. I actually painted this one six years ago and the verse is Psalm 119, 111. It says, your testimonies are my heritage forever for they are the joy of my heart. The next verse I'm going to flip to is the one that I will paint today, and it's Nehemiah 8.10. It says, For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Gosh, I can say that one over and over again. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. I want to share two more verses with you before I begin to paint. The next one was Romans 15.13, which I had painted at Christmas, so here's a little Christmas tree. This one says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I painted this purple, and it's the last verse I wanted to share, which was John 16, 20 through 22. In a tiny bit of context, it's the disciples, and they're all questioning Jesus, like, where are you going? Why are you leaving us? And just kind of confused and talking about mourning, but then he'll return, and they just couldn't see the full picture yet of the cross and Jesus. So this example stirred for me because I am a mama, and I have given birth to three children. And his reply, Jesus' reply to them is, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. For the joy of that human being has been born into the world. So also, you will have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. Ah, and I just loved that so much, that Jesus was explaining that he is not going to stay on this earth and he is going to die, but that he will come back and come to life and will restore joy. And we can have that joy because he's still alive. And that makes me so excited. And how cool is that? That like a child, we often say, oh, look, the new little bundle of joy. And I feel like, wow, that like expression could be scripture based off of John 16, 20 and 
and just explaining that like the joy comes after the hardship. So I dove into painting the Nehemiah verse, which is the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I just started painting it here with some little, little flowers and leaves. And I will read you the prayer that I had written in pink highlighter years before because it still spoke to me when I flipped to read this verse again. It said, today is a good day for a good day. Father, please give me and everybody listening the courage to step into the reality that my day is what I make it. Based on my attitudes, give my heart your joy, even in the mundane. Amen. Friends, I pray no matter what circumstances your day holds that you will find the joy of the Lord. And my little one really wanted to be fancy like a princess and paint at the desk when I was done painting because she thought that was fabulous. So there she was. Um, hug your family, hydrate, serve your family, cook, clean, love Jesus, and I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me in decluttering our fridges together. Bye, friends.